You're listening to This Woman Can, episode 25, with an Arthur Exeter. Suck it up and recognise you've earned it. Welcome to This Woman Can, the women's leadership podcast and your source of information related to women's leadership, female entrepreneurship, personal success and career advancement. I'm your host, Janice Sutherland, executive coach, leadership development expert, and the author of This Woman Can, the no bullshit guide for women who lead. And now, this week's episode. So welcome everybody to this week's edition of This Woman Can. And I'm always delighted to bring women who are achieving extraordinary things throughout the Caribbean re- region. And Renata Exeter is no exception to that. She's not only the first female CEO of the Guyana Oil Company Limited in Guyana, but she's also the youngest. So a couple of firsts there all round. So Renata, welcome to this week's edition of This Woman Can. How are you? I am doing well, Janice, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, yes, the youngest and the first um, female, lots of great accolades. But tell us about your journey and how did you get to where you are today? All right. So I started, um, you know, out of high school. So I attended uh, the St. Joseph High School in Guyana, and I moved on to Queen's College. And so out of high school, you know, it was just... Typical, you all, you know, I think that, you know, what you do, you kind of like still browsing around deciding what you wanted to do. And, yeah. and I, actually, um, you know, said, well, I'm going to give myself some space and some time and make that decision. So I went straight into the job markets and I had my first um, job at Scotiabank in Guyana. Okay. Um, you know, while being there for just about six months, I started to say, okay, I really like this and this is something I want to do. And so I went to the University of Guyana and I did a diploma in banking and finance. Right. Um, and I spent um, the entire um, time of my study while working at Scotiabank. So I spent three years there. And then I, it, it just became a bit exhausting and I wanted to do something more than what I was doing. Right. And so moved I moved off from there and this is when I joined the Guyana Telephone and Telegraph Company which right. is TT, yeah, Guyana TT. Yes. And so I joined GTT and I went over GTT moving from the bank as a as a teller. I, I started a GTT as a as a um, customer service cashier. Right. And um you know I stayed there for about eight months and then the position came up in marketing and I decided to apply for the position, which was a big leap because in terms of the grading, it, it is that you're moving from a junior to like a senior um, management position. And I've had, even within that time, like doubts, or oh, can I do this? Like, am I allowed to do this? Is this too, is this a little too brazen, you know, to try to apply for this position, um, given that, you know, I would be skipping about four steps. Uh, but nevertheless, with encouragement, you know, from, you know, really good family and friends, you're like, yeah, just go ahead. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. It doesn't, well, you're in the same position. And so I applied and, you know, as the story goes, I actually got the position. <laughs> <laughs> you must have yeah. done something exceptional, really stood out. I'm not sure, but I, I mean, I guess I did well in the, well enough in the interview and I started into marketing and that is where I had my aha moment. Um, my first career aha moment where, you know, I spent a, just a few months in marketing and I find that I just had a natural glue for it. I enjoyed it. I was excited. This was my first time where I was excited to get up, to come to work, to go to work. And you know, I have never in my three years at Scotiabank, it was just a journey, you know, this is what yeah. you do, you go to work, you come home, you wake up the next morning, you're hoping that it's a holiday, you go, but not that <laughs> I didn't enjoy it, but I mean, this was a different experience, really, like I was, you know, it was always anxious to go to work, and so I, I said that as my first aha moment, because it, it's, it's, I, it, the work be, became not a job it just became yeah. something that i loved and 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 i and i excelled at it and um 
that is where my love for and passion for marketing started. And it was such a great, um, it was an excellent uh, ground, groundbreaking for me because at the time, this is where GTT was now transitioning, moving from a monopoly into a competitive environment. So I was part of that entire process, you know, the, how do we prepare for competition? And then actually with, with did you sell launching into the market and yeah. all exciting chaotic things or whichever way you want to call it that happened you know i enjoy that journey and so i spent eight years at at gtt and um you know coming down to and and, and enjoyed every second of it but coming down to like when i was in my just about my eighth year right. i started have that feeling again where you know it just be start to become a process it become very start to become very monotonous and I felt that I grew all that I could have grown in that current position and that job and so um, I didn't want to be in a place where I'm just kind of like an auto zone because yeah. it was just my type of personality and um, and so I planned for, for it for some time and I thought that I'm just going to go into entrepreneurship. I'm just going to use the skills that I have and move on and probably do something else within marketing consultancies. And, right. and, 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 and so I tried, I had, I had a, cons, a consultancy and I, that I did for a company for about six months and I enjoyed it. And then I decided from then, okay, I'll just launch off all of it into my own. And I, I started with a partner that worked at gt and also that we came called with my, my colleague, became a really good friend. We turned out to be business wow. partner. And um, we launched the company to our production. And so to our production, what it allowed was for us to, um, while working at gt and we recognized that there was a gap in the market where um, there's a, the, the, a one-stop company for all marketing and production needs. Right at the time so you had like advertising companies that will do you with bookings and you have companies that will do graphics and you have companies that do um the ads and so one of the difficulties that we face is oftentimes getting that you know the the, the theme of just one concept yes. yeah built. yeah yeah so that is the best what the company was birthed to do so what we did is just pull the resources from at the best in the market for advertising, the best in the market for printery, the best in the market. And we just merged all together through, you know, just through partnership, merge it all together. And that's what we offer to the clients. And that, that went really well. Um, and, uh, you know, in, so I did that for, I think it's about like independent for about two years. Right. And then I actually, but it was always supposed to have been a side job. But it, you know, I moved off into it full time, full time. Right. But the idea that I'm still going to go back into the corporate world. Right. Okay. I'll do this. So what it was it was that it, it, it provided that transition for me. So you know, so I was still you know looking for jobs and stuff, and then I I end up working um, with a company that I got shortlisted and then interviewed, and then finally the position for 3M Inter American Inc. Right. And so 3M. 3M was starting a pilot where they wanted to have a representative in Guyana to help to build out their portfolio and to penetrate the market. And um, so I started to work with 3M, which is just a phenomenal experience. And I, you know, it was a contract acquisition. I worked for the first two years and I went on to the next two years. And it, after then, after, because I knew the contract, it wasn't a stuff, I knew the contract was coming to an end. And that is when I joined the uh, Guardian Media as a general manager, which is Anson McCall Group. Yeah. Um, and while at Guardian Media, I think after like the first year, I had, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, my intuition always takes me to the best place that I want to be. And so it's, you know, I have to, you know, I, I enjoyed it. It was a new business to build because it was the first radio station of the company to right. come to the new. And um, it was really exciting. It was a small staff to develop and build and stuff. Uh, but I actually had at, at my, my, my resume was, I was still sending my resume out. And I, 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 I was going to interview for one position and the, the recruitment company just thought, oh, my resume is so good for this position. So it is such an ironic or just a phenomenal journey because I didn't 
intentionally ever applied right. for the position of CEO at at, at Dial. I, it was a, it was like oh you know we can refer we, we we are referring your resume, and at that time you know like I'm gonna be very honest with you, Janice. It was like okay, like if you feel you need to make up some numbers, <laughs> fine. <Yeah. laughs> that was really what it was for me because like I never imagined it to be possible for on so many different counts, you know, right. I just, it, it, you know, it is a large entity. I'm moving from a very small um, management position to a chief executive officer at, you know, one of the largest government agencies. Yeah. So, I was shortlisted for the interview and right through the interview from start to end, that was, I came into it like, I, and I said, I'm going to do my best. I thought I did my best. And, but when I left there, it was the same thing I felt like, oh, well, I'm just here to make up numbers because they need to get a required amount. And so that's what is happening. And I just went back to job, my job and I never looked back. And a few months after I got a call to say that they want to do a second interview. Oh, wow. And I was attracted to the period between the yeah, two. It actually had a lapse in it. Right. Like almost like, like, like four months. Wow. So, yes. So I had, and so it was one of these things I was kind of like glad in a sense, and because it's, it is glad meaning that it was like, oh, I satisfied, like, oh, I knew it. I knew that I was yeah, just doing yeah. it. So I think, you know, so the, the, there's a lessons that, that was learned in that process that we can share later. But, you know, I did the second interview and then <laughs> here I am. I mean, wow. it was just, it was, I mean, it's just such been, been such a blessing. I just believe that it's just a combination of so many things like, yeah, sports and, 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 you know, this always, you know, you know I find that as women, one of the things that, and maybe it's just a human factor, um, that you always have to remind yourself, that, oh, I'm, I can do it and I, I'm good enough and I, this, this can happen, you know, yeah. so that this this has taught me that yeah 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 there's all so Nath, you've worked in from what i can hear some pretty diverse industries because there's no been like um you know it's logical should i say from an industry perspective stepping stones you've worked in you've worked in media you've worked in telecommunications you've worked in oil you've worked in banking so what yeah. do you think has been the most that the the transferable skills you've utilized throughout throughout the roles yeah well the transferable skills has definitely been just you know the ability to manage because yeah. in any of those roles it's you have to you know whether you're managing the way you just the day-to-day -day operation of the business you're managing projects you're managing you know it was just that has been my most dynamic skill you know the ability right. to man manage well yeah. and so um and what i believe also to have been um the the success part and the the, the the opportunity while i did spend most of my years my professional career in marketing even throughout that you know it just come it came into play every single time the ability to manage and just the ability to lead leadership yeah. skill yeah. Uh, has also been you know a, a transition from time over to every single job yeah yeah and so from the commercials i mean from marketing through to ceo having held the CEO kind of role, I know the level of pressure, I know the, the challenges, the commer commercial aspect of it. How did you make that transition? Well, you know, I think I'm still in that transition mode. So, because <laughs> I've, I've, I've just concluded six months in this position, so I'm still right. you know, figuring it out. Okay. Um, yes, it's just been six months, so I'm still figuring it out. Um, However, what has been the opportunity is really just the support that I've gotten, you know, like I, you know, just a support, um, you know, I think, you know, what I've learned in the process is that, you know, that really is, is ultimately a, a, a make and break for you if you have, if you're surrounded by the right team of people. Yes. Yes. So moving across, you know, you know, the first intuition and the first thing that came across was like when this really did happen and, and I was called and told that I'm, you know, the board has um, approved me for the position. Immed my immediate thing was fear. I was like, oh my gosh, like these, they, they can be serious. I, I'm not ready for this. I'm not prepared for this. And, you know, had that, you know, overly doubtful perspective, you know, like, and I, 
team, what I call my group of cheerleaders, my friends and stuff, <laughs> basically just continue said, you know, snap out of it. You know, yeah. you can do this, you know, you can do this. And then, you know, you, 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 you didn't get there by accident. You didn't, you weren't placed there by anyone, you know, you've yeah. earned your way there. Yeah. And that, has been the change in words for me when I hear you say, all right, you're right, I earned this. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah. and so that's really been the thing that has helped me with the transition. That they, they, they have. My biggest um, source or method of transition for me is that I just had such a great, um, just a phenomenal group of, yeah. uh, of, of, of people, family and friends, and that just always reminded me. And then, like I said, the, the key turn turning point was for me was you've earned it. And so you, know, you need to own it. And so <laughs> that is where, that is where it was to me. It's like, Oh yes, you've earned this. So you should own it. You know, you spent, you spend so much time and you went to school and you know, cause what I didn't mention is that during all this time and while being at, 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 at GTT and while going on to um, the, the, as general manager of Guardian Media, is that I continued my academic career right, 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 right because right. for me that was really important. And while I was at GTMT and I got to that understanding that this is what I really like, this is what I really enjoy, um, I returned to the university again and I did a, a first degree in business management. Right. right. Uh, and then when I when I when, when I completed that just a few years after I went straight to do my um, masters I did an executive masters um, in business administration yeah. so I continued along that uh, which is really important so I just, just continued along that academic path yeah. um, and that has helped also to you know to just keep the ground because you know when especially when I did my um, during my masters program. We did a lot, a lot of programs and a lot of case studies and mm. and about transitioning and 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 all these things. And so, um, you know, that was one of the things that like that that is what helped in the process. When I was told, you know, you earned it here. You spent all this time. You spent yeah. all those late nights up. You know, you've done this. You you went. You 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 you've gone through the process. And so you just need to own it. And so that's what I I did. I just had to just suck it up and own it and go forward <laughs> and, and it's amazing how dif how how difficult as women we don't realize we've earned it because i tell the women i coach that the thing is no organization employs somebody at this level to make their business fail you know right. they have a level of confidence in you that you can deliver even if you don't see it just yet you know yeah. so, and, and it's amazing that it takes a bit of time to understand yeah i got here and i've earned the seat at this table and i'm going to keep it Yes. And, and, and the second thing for me, you talked about having your um, your support network, but female, youngest, male dominated environment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they had to be some challenges. Absolutely, and I think for me the challenge um, was because I have worked all my life, all my professional life in the private sector. Right. And so I was now transitioning to the public sector. Yes. So I had several culture shocks. Yeah. You know, um, you know, the first few days I got here, a few weeks I got here, I was, you know, I had one, a lot of these, huh? Huh? Really? <laughs> you know, so I had, because it's, 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 it is so, it is such, such a real thing how it is such, yeah. you know, you hear it all the time, yes. but it's such a different environment from a culture yeah. standpoint. Yeah. And so, that was the first challenge for me because I was still wearing the private sector yeah. hat, yeah. you know? So, um, and, 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 and it, in, in the first couple of weeks and going into the very early months, because I continue to wear the private sector hat in many instances and continue to look back, okay, well, this, this doesn't happen and this is what should happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, it, it, it created some amount of frustration at, at a very early stage. Right. Uh, but what I was able to recognize immediately once I was getting into that frustration wouldn't work up is that, okay, well, self-assessment and, and, and really to pull myself back in, think about it, think about where I am, and then make that transition mentally also right. that I'm in this new environment. Yeah. So to pick one single thing, that is what it was. It was the transitioning from that you're in a different environment, a different industry, yeah. Yeah. and um, 
you know, so you had to have made this, 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 yeah. this, this culture change. And so, yeah. um, you know, so I had to really embrace because a lot of things that I wanted to change within the company is that I had to first accept that this is what it is and where I want to take it to. Yeah. 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 And you have to have that vision and share yeah. that vision and believe and, and, and stand by it. So Renatha, what makes you tick? Um, <laughs> so what makes me tick? Generally, I think, um, from a, from a personal, from a personal side, uh, you know, I'm thinking it through because there's, there's, there's just so many things yeah. that, 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 I, that, I, that I can point out. Um, so if, if, if it's, and and by take you just to, for clarity, you know, like is the positive way or yeah, negative? Positive, well, yeah, positive. What gets you up in the morning? What make, what keeps you going? Oh, okay. So we're really, you know, like just 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 the aspect of knowing that I can I'm, I'm, I can make a difference. Right. That, that's that's just it. So I, you know, like I come, you know, and and this is from a, both personal and my professional life. That I'm here to make a difference. So in my personal life, you know, it gets you know, I have a ten year old daughter, and knowing right. that I'm you, know, this, I'm, you know, that God has blessed me with this little human being that I am responsible for nurturing and making a difference and a change in her life. So that is what keeps me moving from a professional standpoint. Is that I come in and I have a mission and a vision in terms of like what do I want to change and how yeah. do I want to change it and what do I need to make it change and to. To, to just knowing that I have the ability to make it happen. Right. Right. So right. that's, that. So that really keeps me moving. So, you know, like it's, it's, it's always about what is your game plan? What is your game plan? How yeah. do you, how do you continue? Like, and, and, and I do a lot of personal in, in, introspection. So it's, I'm always finding ways and always looking to see, what it is that I need to do to be the best version of, version of myself. And that does change in every single day. I can yeah. you know, just becoming a better version of me every single time. Excellent. Excellent. Now you've been, you've been pretty successful, you know, by all, by all accounts, but what part is failure? What, what, what part is failure paid? Um, what, what difference has failure made in your life? Well, you know, I have embraced my, successes as much as I've embraced my failures yeah. um, because I believe that my failures has con contributed to my success <laughs> <laughs> you know because what 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 I have always told myself is just to keep moving right. and I remember at one time I I was attending um I was I used to attend a particular church and you know the pastor at the time said you know you know, when you're down at the bottom, you know, you should rejoice because there's no other way to go than the top. <laughs> and it, 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 it was, it was kind of like a phenomenal thing for me. It was like, Oh, that's a bit profound. It's like, all right. You know, like you can go lower than the bottom. And so, um, it is always, you know, like whenever I have of those times when I've had those moments, when I look back at what those moments were, it contributed to the next step in my life. Because I've used those failures to build on where I want to be and build on what I want to do different. You know, you know, I, I, I never, um, I'm not the type of person that sag over it or spend time and, and, and just, so, you know, sorrow myself, but really to always say, okay, so what can I learn from this? Yeah. What is this teaching me? And you, you talked about doing things differently. So if you had to start from scratch, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Well, I think, um, I think I've pretty much just from a checkbox perspective, um, uh, you know, like in my personal life, I can say what I will do differently. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and that is not get married at 21. <laughs> I, I can relate. I was 19 the first time. So I saw, so I can relate. <laughs> so, so that for sure. Um, you know, so just to give myself more time to yeah. understand who I was yeah. and who I am as a person. Yeah. Um, 
that is definitely, and I think that that has impacted me in so much ways in terms of just decisions that I've made. Uh, and that's why, I, you know, because it has given, had some amount of impact even in my professional life right. and how I journey through that. Um, you know, so I, I spoke earlier about just always being in that position of, or always doing things that, you know, help me to be the better version of myself. Yeah. And so um, what I know now that I didn't know then is that, I was still, I didn't even know who I was and I was still figuring out myself. And so, um, that definitely, I mean, you know, the, you know, there's, there's lots of great experiences that I've had. Yeah. Um, and I, and, and, and I'm not, I don't regret, um, regret it in, but I'm just saying that if to do it differently, that's what I would have done. Just giving myself some time. Right. But I mean, what it has produced is the greatest thing in my life. And this yeah. is daughter that I have that is 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 just the best part of me so um it's always difficult to view it from the lens of any sort of regret yeah no I I, I, t- I totally understand that I can, I can I can relate I can definitely relate now you touched on um some of the challenges around it, surrounding confidence you know so now you have the self-doubt you have to kind of maybe talk yourself talk yourself up in your own head so how do you navigate confidence issues and get out of any vicious circles in that respect? You know, what is, what is, what is um, just so funny about it is that the confidence issue is always a battle for myself. It's just like a personal battle in the sense that people that I meet, whenever I tell them that that is one of my struggles, they're like, oh, what are you talking about? You always sound great. You always look so confident. You always, you know, um, you know, you know, it's like, I, I, I've never seen that about you. And most people that I, that know me, that I talk to, this is something I will have to tell them. Yeah. And when I tell yeah. them that, you know, they will always be like, oh, really? Oh, well, I, I never knew that, or I didn't see that. But for the persons who know me from very personally, you know, like, cause I have a very good friend and colleague that we when the school when we did our um master's program together and he will always be saying that you know like i will do something and then i will always question it and then he you know when he he was one of the person that was filling up uh, a study report for me and you had to list when i was doing a, a program on emotional intelligence and you had to list um three weakness, weaknesses of the person and he actually listed that down always doubts herself always doubts herself, always doubts herself. I'm like, you're supposed to do trees. <laughs> he was like, well, that's, that's the tree that I'm doing. And um, it, was actually, it was actually that that helped me to realize that, oh, well, I do this quite often, don't I? Yeah. You know, yeah. So it was it was something that I used to do that I didn't I, I didn't even recognize it as an issue until it was brought to my attention because I will have something to do or I have a presentation. I'll be like, oh, can I really do this? Can I really do? Then I will write the presentation and I will go there and apparently do great. Yeah. And so it's always like, why did you even doubt yourself in the first place? And then the next day I will have to do the same thing and I will go through the same process. <laughs> you know. And so it was until that moment that I was like I, it was my next and uh, not aha moment that I had it's like oh you know what I really do do this and so I started to talk myself through that now and I own it again and recognize that there's no need for that and yeah. so yeah I think I'm a lot more confident um in terms of just my approach and the, you know because I've built that nature in terms yeah. of whatever I go there and project this is this is I'm projecting what I'm producing. So, yeah. you know, there's no need for me to, you know, be in this worrisome mode all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, so not you're in a great leader, you're in a great leadership role. You're in a position of leadership. In your opinion, what makes a great leader? Well, for me, leadership is really, um, is, is, is about team. It's about doing, um, you know, the walk in the walk and, and as against talk in the talk. That if, if you just, if I have to just say it in one sentence, that is what it is. And it's coaching and, and, and helping people to, you know, you want to bring out the best potential best in, in each person that you meet. It's about changing lives and transforming lives and trans, the whole transformation. That is what I see leadership as, you know. It's, you know, about service um, most of all, you know, that, that Persons, you know, you, it's always an opportunity to how, like, how do I make this the best situation? How do I make this person the best version of themselves? Excellent, excellent, excellent. And what advice would you share with women who are either barking on the leadership journey or young women entering a male-dominated industry? 
profession? Well, funny enough, I was asked a similar question at a women's conference that I, that I participated in. And it's the very thing that I'm now sharing, the very lesson that I've learned. Yeah. It's first of all to know that you own, this, own your space yeah. and always know that you deserve to be there. Yeah. You know, so that, all that, that has been my advice is that, you know, you deserve a, a seat at the table. And then yeah. once you get there, you own that seat. Yeah. You know, so um, I think that has been the stumbling block for women is that, you know, we ourselves are saying that, oh, well, this is like, this is a male dominated position or this is so, this is so, um, you know, such a masculine thing and stuff. And so that in itself, we, you know, we become, we're starting to defeat our own selves. Yes. Yes. So it's just to understand that you have earned it. Yeah. Own it. Yeah. And then you just, you, you just operate in, in, yeah. in that position, understanding that, listen, this is, this is really, this is really about you as an individual and as a person and you have the right to be there like everyone else. Yeah. And, it, and, and to add to that, it's about making it your own because like yeah. you, you know, when I looked at that role, when I saw the C role, it always been, it always been Caucasian males. And I'm yes. like, I never see, you know, I can't see how I can operate like them. And it was actually a Caucasian male who said to me, you know, an outgoing CEO who said, you don't have to be like that make it your yeah. own, you know? And once it's like, and it's like another ha-ha moment, a light bulb, yeah. it's like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is exactly what I'm saying, just own it and you yeah. just own it, you just have to own it. So that is how you make it your own when you yeah. just own it. So, you know, so I, I looked at, you know, in this role that I am, and so my um, predecessor was a male. Yeah. And so I never compare myself to that position, but I looked at things that the decisions, some of the decisions were made and if it was made with good, good yes. ground, I learned from, I, 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 I take away what, well, what, what, what I can learn from. And then I just leave the rest behind and just, yeah. you know, create my own path. Excellent. 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 And what are some strategies or what advice would you give to women to achieve more prominent prominence in their role at work? Well, I think this is this is just a general um, advice, but it, it specifically apply to women in the sense because it's just become so paramount now. It's just the opportunity of networking and never stop learning. Yeah. So, I mean, it's two different things, but yet at the same time, one because um, I think sometimes we are just so comfortable in our own space. Yes, and this is who I am, and this is my space, and you know, this is my little world, and so. Yeah. Um, I have been encouraging young people all the time is that, you know, you know, you have to network, you have to meet people. You never stop learning. If you see there's an opportunity to learn something, you know, even if it's a refresher, take advantage of it. You know, there's always something new to learn in every process. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And share with us a success quote or a mantra that you use and why it's meaningful for you, Renata. I saw that smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a smile because so it, it's it's really be the change you want to be. Right. You want to see, yeah. So you know, and and I smile there because of the fact that um, we 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 have. I don't know if it's just, and this is personally from, you know, because I live in Guyana. And so I find that we, we have a lot of complainers, right? You know, yeah. A lot of naggers, you know, like, oh, they're doing this or doing that. And then you will ask, okay, so what have you done differently? Oh, I haven't done anything differently, but you know, they're so just, just th that, that has always been something that's appealed to me. You know, you make the difference, you be the change that you want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Love that. Love that. And we talked about you being younger and stuff and looking back, but what advice would you give to your teenage self or even to your daughter in a couple of years? Because, you know, <laughs> um, I think, I think it's just, you know, just, just embrace every moment. Yeah. And one of the things that I wasn't, I wasn't thought to be a good, that the, a good thing in growing up is failure right. and you know, see failure as an opportunity to do better. Yeah. So that is one, because I remember, you know, growing up as a, as a teenager and, you know, failure was such a horrible thing, you know, like, 
it, it, it was a scary thing. And so it, that in itself has created some amounts of a lot of timidness and, you wow. know, because you, you're, you're scared to try because you're what scared, if I scared. feel? Yeah. And right. so that is, you know, like I, I feel that's definitely the, 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 the advice I give to my daughter is like, just try, yeah. go yeah. ahead. There's nothing yeah. that you can do. If you try it and you fail, then you get to laugh and say, well, I tried that and that's no good or that was good. And then you will never know how good you are at it or how good you're not at it unless you yes. try. De yeah, definitely agree. Do not be afraid. Do not allow failure to be a deterrent for you to not to try new things or anything that may appear to be challenging. Excellent, excellent. And what three things, or what three things have you learned about yourself during your career? Well, I've definitely, um, like one that I've mentioned before, I've definitely learned that you know, just my, just how I'm able to understand my own confidence. Yeah. So that was something that, you know, I, I it was just there, but then, you know, in, in going through this, my career, I realized. And then another thing that I've learned about, about myself is that once I enjoy something, I'm, I, I put my all into it. I'm so passionate about it. And, and, and what that has helped me is that it's, it's, it's to be able to, you know, carve out the right, carve out the right career path. The oh. other thing I've learned about myself is that if it, does, if it doesn't feel right, most likely it isn't. Yes. And that's it. Doesn't <laughs> feel right. Don't, don't do it. Move on. Yeah. If it yeah. doesn't feel right, most likely it isn't. <laughs> yes, definitely. I totally agree with you there. But so we're coming to the end now, Renatha. Um, where would we find you on a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock? On a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock at home? Like, <laughs> um, uh, most times I'm, I'm, I'm just probably out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Saturdays are usually like my launch days. Yeah. Um, especially if I had like really long um, Fridays, which tend to happen a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you Saturdays, I, I I I don't like to make plans for anything before twelve o'clock on Saturday. Okay. Excellent. Like, Excellent. Just relax. Yeah. So, so so demanding job, and uh, I would guess stressful. Like you say, your first six months, you're still learning a lot. How do you how do you manage your self care? Well, you know. That has always, you know, we, we, we talk about, um, you know, having the right mixture of persons of support and stuff. And that has actually been something for me that never took the back seat. Right. Um, you know, and I've always been reminded and continue to remind myself that for me to be successful at what I'm doing is that I have to first take care of me. Right. You know. You're talking about, I, I've repeated a couple of times of being the best version of yourself. Yes. You know, so what I always um, strive to achieve is that balance that, that as, as stressful as my job is, you know, if it's, even if it's on Saturdays, I'm doing it just to find time to do things that I like doing that I enjoy doing. Yeah. And so if, if it's during the week, even if it's for half an hour, it's just to find time. So for instance, that I, 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 I you know, love working out, you know, gym is, when I'm at gym, it's, it's just that my, um, you know, stress really, that's in my, I'm in my zone. And, um, and when I, when I moved and when I started working, even before I joined Guy All, like I recognized quickly that sometimes you can allow the job to consume yes. you because I've always had very, you know, since GTT, I've always had very demanding jobs. Yes. And so you can allow the job to consume you. But what I recognize that I'm, at my best when I can strike that balance. It's so, wow. such a strange thing, but I've been able, you know, as, as again, so if I'm working from eight in the morning to eight in the night, then, you know, I'm really not at my best. Like my, 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 my concentration level drops after certain times. Yeah. As again, so I balance it out. If I get into gym, then get back into work or, you know, I do something, you know, take a break and have a lunch date with, yeah. with a friend or and whatever I'm really at my best that's when I'm at my optimum Excellent. so great. I've learned that early enough that by the time I transition into this position I continue to practice right. that right yeah and that's a really healthy mindset because too many of us actually hit burnout mode or sometimes don't even, rec don't even recognize it and then sometimes it's too late to kind of pull it back um, without yeah. some debt about some yeah. De yeah. health, health yeah. detriments 
yeah, you know, you 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 always end up with that to that break. And then that's what and especially in any senior position, you don't have to be a CEO. You you know, like I, I was a, a brand manager or, or in the case of in marketing, just marketing officer. But most senior positions, it's very easy to get into that stage of burnout. And so you you have to know, and that's always another advice I give people that end up in leadership roles and stuff is that to maintain as much as you could, even if it's 10 minutes, whatever it takes yeah. to ensure that you have that balance. Excellent. Excellent. And lastly, Manatha, I'll let you out the hot seat. What's your <laughs> definition of success? Well, you know, my definition of success is basically whatever you have set to achieve and when you have reached the point where you feel that you have satisfied that goal. Yeah. So it's always personally defined. Right. And, and, and so, um, you know, so somebody's definition of success, you know, where, 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 wherever you're at your optimum that brings you satisfaction. Excellent. Excellent. So it's all you know, so whatever that is. And so, for each one of us, it's different. So some of us, we want to be at the top of a, the, the, the chart in an organization. Some of us do not have that aspiration. And so do we say, well, that person is not a, trying to be successful? No. They did. no. So whatever it is for you that allows you to reach the optimum, bring you that sense of satisfaction. Excellent. 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 So that was my last question. And I know the technical gremlins were trying very hard to stop our conversation, Renata. But if anybody wants to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Okay, so I'm on um, LinkedIn and my name is Renata Exton. I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know if LinkedIn actually has a handle like the other places, but that's usually the best place I'm, that, that you can connect with me. Fabulous. And so that's how we did. So um, I can put that link in the, sh in the show notes. Um, and that was definitely my last question, Renata. It was fantastic meeting with you and having a conversation. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you, Janice. And I want to thank you um, for having me. It's been a pleasure and an honor to uh, be on this podcast. Thank everyone who spent the time to listen all the way out to the end. I hope <laughs> they would have learned something in between or be encouraged in some way or just, um, you know, but thank you. And again, I want to just say congratulations to you for just doing such an awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Great interview there with Renatha Exeter. And that's why I absolutely love uh, producing this podcast every week. It's the connections I get to make with these phenomenal women across the region because we don't hear their stories. We don't hear the great strides that Caribbean women are making in the in the business field. Now, if you're at the situation in your career where you feel you could do with some support in moving forward to taking the next step, maybe pursuing that C-level suite yourself, contact me. That's what I do. As I said, I'm an executive coach. I work with women just like you with career aspirations who want to take that next step, who want to go further, but really just need a little helping hand on how to get there. I to utilize all my years of experience from um, working with global companies in the UK and obviously being a C-suite executive in Antigua and Barbuda in the Caribbean. And, you know, I share that with you. I give you the hints, the tips. I coach you. I advise you. I show you the way so that you can make strides for your own personal career. Working with me is really, really easy. Um, just give me a call on one two six eight seven two zero five zero three zero, or email me at info at JaniceSutherland dot com, or DM me at any of my social media platforms. Uh, Instagram, I am Janice Sutherland. Facebook, I am Janice Sutherland. Or connect with me on LinkedIn, Janice Sutherland. You'll find me there. So until next week, as I said, remember if I can. You can, this woman can. Until next time, take care. You've been listening to the This Woman Can podcast, brought to you by This Woman Can, the no bullshit guide for women who lead, available on Amazon and Kindle. For more information about the training and consulting services offered for women who lead, including one-on-one -on -one executive coaching and group masterminds, visit thiswomancan.coach.